Welcome back, mathematicians, to our final video in the series of representing numerical data on number lines. In this video, we are going to learn how to represent data, raw data, um, in a box plot, otherwise known as a box and whisker plot. And when we draw it, you'll be able to see why it's called a box plot or why it's called a box and whisker plot. So again, in keeping with the previous two videos in this video series, um, we're going to stay with the same uh, same word problem and we're going to graph this data uh, on a box plot so let's get started with the actual um, work so Miss McGregor is a teacher in rural Florida she surveyed her students to find out how far from school her students lived the data is the distance between the school and her students homes in miles so again, when I say eight, I mean one student who lives eight miles from school. When I say 10, there's another student who lives 10 miles from school. All right, we're gonna represent this data in a box plot, otherwise known as a box and whisker plot. And we need to be sure to include a title, all right? So in order to take care of this first, a box and whisker plot is basically a five number summary. So it's a way of summarizing the entire data set with five numbers. Those five numbers include the minimum, which is the smallest number in the data set, the maximum, which is the largest number in the data set, the median, which is the middle value in an ordered data set. Um, then we'll also take the median of the lower half of the data otherwise known as the first quartile, or Q1. A quartile is uh, a grouping of data in which uh, the data has been broken up into four equal parts. Uh, that's why it's called a quartile, because it represents a quarter of the data. All right, and then we also have uh, the median of the upper half of the data, which is called the third quartile. Now, if you're thinking about data in terms of quartile and wondering, does the median have a quartile name? It actually does. It's called the second quartile of the data. Okay? All right. So what we have now are five numbers that are going to be able to summarize what the, um, what the data is all about. It gives us a beginning of the data with the minimum. It gives us an end of the data with the maximum. And it will give us where the middle 50% um, of the data lie um, or the mid-range uh, with the first quartile through the third quartile and again it tells us exactly where the middle of the data is with the median. Alright so first of all we need to order our data set. First step whenever you are making a box plot is order your data set. Alright so the smallest number here so far is 8 let's keep on going it's 7 let's keep on going it's 7 it's 7 it's 5 so the smallest number is 5 once I've taken care of it I'm gonna cross it out all right, so there's a five there. Next, I'm looking for the next smallest number, eight so far, seven. Keep on going, so far it's seven, it is seven. So I'm gonna cross out that seven and move on to the next number. I see another seven right here, I'm looking for the next smallest number, that's taken care of. All right, next smallest number is an eight. Okay, so far eight is the smallest. Okay, eight it is. Move on to the next one, eight. Next is 10, okay, 10 is the smallest of the remaining, no, another 10, another 10, and lastly we have an 11. All right, let me just verify that I actually have nine pieces of data. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I only have eight. That means that though there are three tens, I did not include a third 10. It's very, very important for you to go back and to check to make sure that you have all pieces of data uh, because being off by only one piece of data can spell disaster for your, uh, your end results, meaning that you're going to get the answers incorrect. So check in the beginning to make sure you have all that you need so that you don't have to go back and change everything. All right, so again, I'm going to find the minimum, which is the smallest number. These, these first two are very easy, the minimum and the maximum. So the minimum is going to be 5, that's the smallest number, so I'll label that the minimum. 
the maximum is going to be the largest number. Okay, now this next one, the median, is going to be the middle value. Now, there is a very, um, a very uh, time intensive way to figure this out. Uh, whereas you cross off the least, greatest, least, greatest, least, greatest, least, greatest, and you'll be left with eight, the second eight in the middle um, t as the median. Uh, but if you actually were to uh, use an, an algorithm that's pretty quick and easy f uh, to s figure out, sorry for drawing that little squiggly, um, then what you do is you take how many pieces of data you have, and um, there are nine pieces of data, and you're going to add one to that piece of data because you add one to that to the number of of data points in your sample because what you want to do is you want to find fifty percent of the data points that are less than a number and fifty percent that are greater than a number and by adding one you're actually doing that so um, we're gonna take nine add one to it and that's ten and then I'm gonna divide that by two because I literally want to find half um, and that's the fifth data point so that does not tell me that the median is five it tells me the fifth number in my order data set is going to be my median so let me count the fifth number one two three four five as we said earlier if we crossed off least greatest least greatest that would get us the second eight as our median and the median is the number where fifty percent of the data are greater than that number or equal to it and fifty percent of the data are less than or equal to that number okay so now we found the median so we know that there are four pieces of data that are below the median and likewise there should be four pieces of data that are greater than the median so now we have to find our first quartile and our first quartile operates in the same exact way now though we're finding the median of the lower half four pieces of data now as I said before we could go least greatest and we'd be left with two numbers in the middle add them up and then divide by two because we added up to two data points but there is a faster way to figure this out the same exact way we take okay there are four pieces of data that are less than the median we're gonna add one to that because we want to find the number that is in the middle of those four numbers um, and we're gonna add one to that so now we have five data points and then we divide that by two and we get 2.5 2.5 so that does not tell us that the lower quartile is 2.5 it tells us look between the second and the third number so I'm gonna do that the first second right in between the second and the third number is going to be my first quartile to find the middle of these two numbers I have to add them up and divide by 2 so 7 plus 7 is 14 and I divide that by 2 and 14 divided by 2 is 7 so our first quartile or Q1 is 7. Now some of you might be wondering why did you add up the numbers and divide by 2? Why didn't you just say the number was 7? Because sometimes the numbers aren't going to be right next to each other or they're not going to be the same exact number and it's not going to be as obvious. For example if you had 13 plus 9 and you added up 13 plus 9 you'd get 22. Divide that by 2 and you get 11. So 11 would be um, would be that um, that uh, that data point that you were trying to find or, or that summarizing point that you were trying to find so just wanted to uh, spell out for you the importance of adding them up and dividing by two okay all right now we're gonna find the median of the upper half of four pieces of data we've already done the math so we know we're looking for the 2.5 um, uh, position so that would be between the second and the third number that's above the median so we're gonna go one two right in between the second and the third would be between the second 10 and the third 10. So we add up the two pieces of data, we get 20, and then we divide by 2 and we get 10. So 10 is our third quartile. 10 is our third quartile. All right, now what we're going to do is we have all of the numbers that we need to represent our, to summarize our data in a box and whisker plot. A box plot needs to have these five numbers the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. And we have those five numbers right here. So what's the smallest number? Five. What's the largest number? Eleven. 
So to organize this, I like going just a number before and a number after, though you don't have to do that. Um, so I would start my number line off with 4 and end with the number that comes after 11, which is 12. 12 minus 4 is 8, but because I'm including a 4 in there, I need to have 13, um, 13 tick marks. So if I were doing this in person, uh, not on a screen, I would be using a ruler. So I'm going to use this ruler to make my 13 equal sized points. First of all, to make my number line. Okay, all right, I'm gonna start at nine. No, I'm gonna start at four and go all the way up to 12. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I have nine points here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know why I decided to go beyond here, but I did. <laughs> All right. Um, so, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, the uh, 12 minus 4 is 8, and one more would be 9. So I, I think I drew 13 because I was thinking about 12. All right. So we have nine points here, and now we're going to plot the data. All right, five is located right here. The minimum and the maximum get uh, get the shorter lines. So I'm going to draw a short line right there on five, uh, and then a short line on eleven. So that's my maximum. All right, and then seven plotted at seven, which is right there. These get the longer lines. So another a long line at eight. and another longer line at 10. And then I would connect the three longer lines in the middle. And as you can see, that's now created a box. And then I'd extend the line from the first quartile to the minimum, or the minimum to the first quartile, and then the third quartile to the maximum would also get a line. And these are what we call the whiskers. So here's your box, and here are the whiskers. Now we have to give a title for this, and a title for this box and whisker plot would be the same exact um, as before. Distance between home and school. in miles. All right, and now these these five numbers actually summarize our data. So we can see the data starts just by looking at, at, at this graph. The data starts at five. The middle of the data is eight. So the data goes from five to eleven. And the middle of the data uh, is eight. That means uh, the fifty percent mark and the lower quartile or the first quartile is at seven miles and the third quartile or the upper quartile is at ten miles and in in looking at this we, we now have a great summary of the data we don't have to include all of the data points but we have a good sense of where our lowest and highest uh, data points are where the middle of the data is and where the middle fifty percent of the data lies and we'll get into the next video after this uh, which will talk about interquartile range, and uh, that will get into um, what is called a measure of variation. So hope you enjoy these three videos on representing data. The next video series is going to be on measures of center and measures of variation. Um, so the next video after this will get into um, measures of variation, in particular the interquartile range. Hope you enjoy this video and stick with us for the rest of this uh, module on statistics. Take care.